Bruce Dickinson is better than Iron Maiden, despite being the weakest member of Maiden. And Dark Bruce is better than Light Bruce. What's the meaning of your business here on a stormy day? Welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. This is our album review of The Mandrake Project by Bruce Dickinson. No one needs an introduction or a background on Bruce frickin' Dickinson, but in case somehow you do, Paul Bruce Dickinson born on August 7th, 1958 in Worksop, Nottinghamshire, England. Started off in his early in his early days as a singer for the band Samson from 1979 to 1981, which according to him was poorly run and managed. Just happened to be that they were fortunate though at that time that they were touring with Iron Maiden and after their their gig, which was the Reading uh, Music Festival, he was approached by uh, Rod Smallwood, who was the manager of Iron Maiden. And he basically approached and asked him if he would be willing to audition to be the new singer uh, of Iron Maiden as they were looking to replace or move on from Paul Donato. He would end up, Bruce would end up actually doing so back in September of 81, rehearsed with the band and instantaneously decided, you know, it was, it was accepted and became the member shortly after even uh, joining gigs with them and then started to record what would wind up becoming the infamous legendary The Number of the Beast album. He would spend essentially 12 years with Maiden initially uh, before deciding to leave uh, the band to focus on his, on his solo career. Now, despite the tensions actually starting and forming already right away back uh, after and during the uh, forever, seemingly forever long and just downright exhausting uh, tour, which was the Power Slave Tour, uh, at that time, he wouldn't wind up actually leaving until uh, 1993. This exit would actually not even be for, for that long. It actually would only be about six years because in 1999, would wind up actually rejoining with Maiden and it has been now uh, with them for another 30 some years. Uh, he actually did so. He rejoined at, in, at the same time with Adrian Smith, who ended up actually leaving the uh, 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 Iron Maiden even earlier before uh, Bruce did. But nonetheless, during his time away, he would wind up doing, uh, releasing uh, six albums, now seven with uh, the Mandrake Project coming 19 years since the last one, which was Tyranny of Souls in 2005. It's also worth noting that five of the seven albums sees Bruce working with producer, sound engineer, and guitarist Roy Z. So it's often regarded that his solo career is ultimately basically Bruce with Roy. I have listened to the album now four times. Once quickly through just my computer speakers and I hated it. I found it uneventful and bland. The second time was actually a blessing in disguise. It was an opportunity because I was in heavy traffic driving and it presented the opportunity to be able to listen to the album with a much more focused attention and all the way through. When you're driving, still pay attention, just saying. <laughs> but I found myself ultimately enjoying it uh, quite a lot. 
Later on in the evening, I would wind up listening to a, third, for, to a third time all the way through with my headphones on and no distractions. I freaking loved it. Fourth time, yet again, with my headphones on, no distractions in preparation. At this point, I'm obsessed with it. I... I freaking just, I, I can't wait to, to listen again, quite frankly. Uh, why am I telling you all this is because, well, if there's one thing that I've learned over the years is that context is everything. That and this is one of those albums that you cannot appreciate unless you take the time, truly focus complete dedication with your ears and your spirit all the way through with no distractions you know the good old days all right that's it's 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 how you truly will will catch ultimately the mastery the intricate details and just overall breadth and scope of what makes this album so freaking good I know I made some bold statements to kick off this episode. So I'm sure you're all probably wondering what the heck I meant by that. And, and not to mention the fact that they probably also sounded really contradictory. So let me explain. I am just as big of a Maiden fan as you. Probably bigger given the fact that I love the branding side and when it comes to metal there is no band bigger and more loved from a branding an image lifestyle and just a larger in life kind of persona uh than than iron maiden i hell i first learned how to even be creative and to just be a designer thanks to them so i i freaking love this band but let's be honest for a moment as amazing as Bruce is as a singer and a showman, right? Odds are, like me, you're not, you're mostly coming to Maiden because of you know, Steve Harris's galloping bass and the dual harmonious like guitar work from Adrian Murray and then now Janik in later years. That, and again, this is that epic, larger-than-life persona of their songs. And for me personally, I, I always actually love Paul Denial and their first two discs, you know, especially Killers. I, I, I think that they've aged really, really well, and I, I always like that, like, punk-like attitude that Paul and, might I add, Cliff Burr, who was the drummer at that time, I loved what they presented. I felt like things just hit harder and they came with a little more swagger. Uh, yes, I understand, like, the albums with Bruce are iconic, right? But, and Bruce is such a good singer that he's able to adapt to any environment. But I truly believe all of these albums probably would have been perfectly fine with Paul as singer. I mean, when and then when they evolved as becoming like a prog band over the past like 30 years, starting with X Factor, I actually would have been perfectly fine with Blaze Bailey. I loved X Factor. Uh, I still do. Virtual 11, not so much, but that was just a really freaking bad album to begin with. It's actually the one true dud in their entire catalog. Brave New World and On, I, I just, I would have been fine if it would have been with Blaze, which leads me to my second bullet point. Bruce's solo career is better than Maiden's. Let me first clarify something when i say that i am referring to 
you know, the period of time in which when Bruce left in 93 forward. In other words, I was one of the few that when it was announced back in, in 99 that Bruce was coming back to Maiden, I was pissed. I genuinely was. I mean, hear me out. My From my perspective, I freaking loved the pairing of Bruce and Roy Z. For, I believe the music that they were, you know, conjuring up. I, I thought that they were more creative and a little more just fresh sounding. And also, I, I think that it, it suited Bruce's vocal style better. More creative, darker, more inspiring. Tattoo Millionaire was, was wicked fun. Balls to, to Picasso was unique. Accident of Birth was really strong. And The Chemical Wedding was legendary. Arguably as strong as anything Maiden has ever put out. And I liked the progression that they were evolving to. And I didn't want it to end. Even when Tyranny of Souls would come out, I, I found myself listening to that more than... Then say Dance of Death. I liked a little more the accessibility that it presented and and just yeah, it was just it was interesting. I'm not I'm not knocking the maiden album since Brave New World. They are solid. I just think that Bro Bruce and Roy Z were willing to take more risks. Their approach was a darker sound, and with the stories, I just I was really, really vibing with them. Maiden has, they've, they've never sided with the dark side of metal. Despite their lyrics, they have generally always kept things more focused on melody over riffs, power over doom. And it, it works for Maiden. We love them for that. But this leads to my third point. I prefer dark Bruce over light Bruce. Bruce is a renaissance god with so many mastered skills. We could do an entire episode just to go over everything that Bruce has done and is capable of. The guy really is a renaissance man. Not to mention being a badass human being and one of the greatest metal singers ever. But I have never been a big fan of his high, high pitch, aka what I like to call the power or the lighter version of Bruce. His pitches can get a little just, they just get a little too high and out of control for me personally. I, I always loved, you know, the evil, doom, or dark side of Bruce that focuses more on like the baritonal, heavier tonal singing, spoken word, and those wickedly badass evil laughs. And not to mention, then fusing that with, from time to time, the epic operatic, you know, voice that he's iconically known for. That mix and whatnot is exactly what you get with Bruce's solo career. It's, it's just also more experimental with darker subject matter and more emphasis on traditional metal with epic uh, solos and badassery riffs. Thanks to Roy. Listening to The Mandrake Project reminded me how much I love their chemistry. And listening to Roy's riffs paired with Bruce's darker tone of voice is just so damn soothing to the ears. I miss the hell out of it. I miss the hell out of them. Plus, it was also just nice to hear something a little bit different, fresh and exciting. Uh, we needed that. It sounded like Bruce also definitely needed it. A key thing that I think Bruce and Roy do, quite frankly, better than Maiden are the intros. The intros to these songs get you instantly excited and brought right in to the song instantly. They don't dance around. Maiden has always tended to take a different approach, especially as the years have gone on. 
which is to kind of build the song over time. A mistake, might I add, that Metallica also has made. Heck, one of the striking differences between Metallica and Megadeth, you could argue, boils down to their approaches to the intros. My only nitpicks on this album are I, I hate the album cover. It's just, it's bland and uninvited and just uninteresting. Uh, the song Face in the Meter was uncomfortably repetitive and Shadow of the Gods, I, I do wish was ultimately longer. Conceptually love the song, just wish that like the faster, heavier pace sequence was a little bit longer because that would kind of just like overall balance the weight of the song and just make it feel just feel more complete. Other than that, all four of the epic ballads, Afterglow of Ragnarok, Ragnarok, Eternity Has Failed, Shadow of the Gods, and Sonata are all just phenomenal. And I, I love the overall breadth and depth of the album as a collective unit. Bonus points for the incredible view, the videos, Afterglow of Ragnarok in particular. <laughs> We will call this one the the Beauty in Misery album of 2024. It's warm, imaginative, and inviting, filled with constant strength and mystery. And we'll give the Mandrake Project by Bruce Dickinson a graphic metal rating of 89. One last note. Remember... Bruce is 65, 65, and this is what we get. We should take a moment, take a deep breath, be grateful, and respect the absolute dedication, love, and brilliance that this man has gifted us for now 45 years it's, I love you, man. I love you, and I, I'm so thankful and grateful for you. On my next video, to honor both him and Maiden, I'm going to actually take the time to rank and assess all of the, the entire catalog of albums of both, of both their careers. Until then, keep on rocking. Cheers.